Okay, so to start off, I have my Addy knitting machine and I'm gonna be using um, a slight difference in the yarn color. And the yarns that I get, that I find work best in the machines is the Impeccable yarn. So I'm going to be using um, a darker gray and then a lighter gray here for my beanie hat. So I'm gonna start with the lighter color now with the Addy machine or the Centro, you're gonna have clips here where you need to start. So for the Addy machine, you have three black hooks here. So I'm gonna be starting at the first black one here, making sure that my machine is on knit and my counter is at zero. So to start, I'm gonna hook my yarn around the first black hook. And then to cast on, I'm gonna be going behind the next needle, in front of the next, behind and in front. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. This is called long tail casting. So when you hear them say, I'm gonna cast on, this is what you need to do to get your machine ready to knit. So again, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front. And I'm getting a little bit of tension here on my yarn. behind in front, behind in front, and you wanna take your time doing this. You don't wanna miss any needles. Okay, behind in front, all the way. And you have to do this every single time you start a new project. Okay, so now I'm coming around to the end. So you can see that this would be coming um, to me behind the needle in front is over here. So I'm gonna open my little thing here and I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna close it. Now from here, I'm going to rotate the machine to get this started. You hear the clicks, that's um, normal to get the machine kind of started. So you see, I just went through the first row. That click is the counter counting the row. So I'm gonna go around. Okay. Now, when I go around here, I'm making sure I don't have any drop stitches. If I have any drop stitches, there is a way to fix that, but we're hoping we don't get fixed, I'm sorry, drop stitches because it's not fun to fix. Um, it can be fixed. So we are making an adult size beanie and I'm gonna do a color change. So I'm gonna do 70 rows of this and I'm just gonna spin. So I'm gonna do my rows and I'll be, uh, speed this up for you and I'll be back, meet you on the other side. Okay, so I'm coming around to my last couple of rows. So I have to one more row here. Okay, actually I need to go around one more time. Okay, so here we go here. So I'm gonna reset my counter. It's completely up to you if you, um, 
want to continue counting. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to open my little door here and I am going to cut this because I'm going to do a color change and just drop it in the middle. Nothing's going to fall off. The other thing is as this gets longer and it starts hitting your table, all you need to do is evert the um, tube and the weight will help pull this down. Okay, so now I'm switching my color and this is very simple to do. So here's my starting point again. So I'm gonna take the darker color, I'm gonna drop it in the middle and this is where I left off. So you don't wanna start here, you wanna start at the next one and you're gonna tie these two together and that is gonna start your next row of your color. And depending on where you kind of want your brim color to sit, you could do 50 rows of this and then um, you know, 110 or 130 rows of a different color. There's all different color combinations that you can do, but this is just a simple gray on gray hat. Um, and I'm doing, again, um, a total of 140 rows because I wanna have a nice chunky um, brim. So to do this, you just um, hook it on the hook here, and then I will just um, put this in, and you wanna make sure that this catches your yarn. I'm gonna close this, and again, you just wanna take your time and make sure it catches, which it did, and you're gonna go around. When I do one full turn, so now you see here, this was my um, last color, and this is my new color. I'm gonna take and just tie these together. And you don't wanna over tie them because you cause puckering. So you just want to um, tie that. Now you can tie your knot. When you get comfortable making these um, over and over, you'll learn kind of the tension to kind of knot these. Again, if you over tighten this, you're gonna cause puckering on the other side, it won't be pretty. Um, so I'm just gonna knot it um, just one time and I'm just gonna trim them just so they don't get all tangled up. Okay, so my counter is um, the first row and I'm going to do a total of 70, so 69 rows. And I'm just gonna continue doing what I was doing with the previous color. And you wanna make sure, if you're gonna drop this on the floor, your row of yarn, that number one, it doesn't get too crazy and rolls down the hallway on you. <laughs> um, but you just also wanna make sure that it's not getting stuck and pulling. Um, this is what's gonna cause your machine to kind of jam up. So you kind of have to um, you know, figure out what works for you. Some people will take the yarn and put this in a bowl. I do not suggest, um, you know, pulling it off your yarn ahead of time. You can do a little bit. Don't do, don't go too crazy because if you, if you do, you're going to end up with a piled mess of yarn and you're just going to end up wasting um, yarn because you're going to spend time trying to get knots out and you're going to get frustrated. So here we go. And again, I'm going to evert this as it's hitting my table. Now there are weights that you can buy on Amazon. Um, I don't feel the need to do that. Um, the weight of just, you know, everting your yarn and doing kind of like an inside donut works completely fine. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on and do 70 rows. And here you can see the nice color change coming in. Okay, so I just completed my 70 rows for this color. So I'm gonna unopen my, um, my little door here. And I'm gonna take, I don't know, about, ooh, I don't know, 18 inches or so. It doesn't have to be that long. And I'm gonna cut this off. Now, what we're gonna do is casting off. So you need to grab a uh, darning needle and um, I have a nice set that I ordered online and I can put the link in the description. Um, I like the metal ones. I just feel like they slide better than the plastic ones. So I'm gonna take the longest one here, which is this one. Just... And these are not sharp, they are um, blunt tip. Okay, and then you're just going to, um, okay. 
And then you're just going to um, put this through. Okay, so starting here where this ended, you can see this ended here. What you need to do is you need to slowly turn your machine, put the needle underneath the loop so you can catch it, so you can pull the end of the yarn through and this will yarn off that loop. You need to now turn your machine slightly and then pick up the next one and do the same thing. I like to take my time the first few row, um, uh, hooks, uh, loops, excuse me. Um, now I've been using the Centro for a long time and I just invested in this Addy machine. Um, and I'm telling you, it's like um, day and night. <laughs> um, the Centro is great. I've made a lot of great hats with it. Um, a lot of nice gifts for my nieces, um, beautiful hats. I've done scarves, um, but I, I really want to um, start doing to, uh, going to craft shows. Um, actually, I have one coming up on December, I think the 9th. Um, so I'm making hats, I'm making scarves, I'm making fingerless um, like gloves. Um, I'm gonna do a tutorial on that next. Um, and I, now that I have this Addy machine, I'm actually gonna be making a blanket. So um, I'm excited to try that. Okay, so once you kind of get the feel for this, you can pick up a couple of loops at the same time. Like here, you can go a little bit faster. I just be careful to not pull this way, because if you do, if you went too far, you may pull this one off and you're gonna have a drop stitch. So I just pull toward me, I take my time. I don't rush through this process. I spent all this time turning. <laughs> I don't wanna spend the next hour trying to fix a drop stitch. And I have to be honest, I get <laughs> kind of stressed out trying to do it that I end up pulling it all apart and starting over. I don't know why. <laughs> um, okay. I know for me, um, knitting and I actually started crocheting again. So I do have a playlist. Um, I'm starting of, um, crochet because gosh, my non taught me how to crochet when I was a kid. And I remember making these amazing blankets and I haven't done it in years. So, um, I have to tell you, I forgot a lot of the uh, crochet patterns. Um, and I don't have any of her, um, I have an old blanket that she crocheted for me, but anyway, so, um, starting to, um, crochet again. So I'm going to put some beginner, um, videos up as well. I just work so hard at my job that, um, I, I kind of needed to, um, I don't want to say force myself, but force myself to stop working. <laughs> um, through COVID, I, I work in, in healthcare. I work in the operating room. Um, you know, we didn't, I didn't work from home. <laughs> I, I went to work every day and um, I haven't stopped. And I've noticed that, you know, along with everybody else, I'm cl completely stressed out. Um, and I said, you know what? I need to force myself to stop and um, get back to knitting and crocheting. And I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna start a YouTube channel because this will force me, it's kind of strange, to um, sit down and make projects. So, all right, I'm gonna speed this up and I will meet you at the end of this. Okay, last one, and this takes your project right off your machine. So I am now going to um, remove my Addy machine. Okay, so I've taken my machine, my Addy machine off the table, and I just wanna point out the difference between the Centro and the Addy machine is um, the Centro has those suction cups, right? So, um, 
if you're cranking, your Centro is sliding all over the table. Um, I tried Velcro. Um, it works okay, but I feel like I still have to hold the machine down super hard. The Addy machine comes with these hooks. These tighten to your table, and then these hook around the feet. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I was doing the cranking, I didn't hold the machine at all. It is amazing. So I wanted to point that out. Okay. Here are a couple of pom-poms. So I'm not quite sure what one I want to put on. Um, so I'm going to put those there for now. We'll pick those up. Okay. So here's my, and I just knock my things off the table. <laughs> so here's your tube. And when you take it off your machine, it's going to be all kind of, you know, rolled up. So pull it apart, stretch it out. I still have my needle on the end of this from okay. stretch it out, kind of form it back into shape. Okay. Looks good. No drop stitches. It looks really nice. I love this knit here. This is a little bit softer knit. Okay. So from here, what you're going to do is you're going to fold, um, you're going to pull this inside out. Now, because I only had one color change, remember this is where we had the knot. Um, and if I had several colors, um, again, you'd have knots all the way up. So it, you saw earlier how I trim this. If I didn't trim it and say, you know, I've done hats where I've had, you know, 10 different color changes, you end up with a mess of um, yarn. So that's just what I do. Um, and you can just trim that off. Okay. So from here, what I do is meet the ends together. So this is in everted, so it's inside out. The tube is inside out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half. Okay. So I'm going to meet the ends here. So now the right side up is up. The inside out is, is, is um, on the inside, obviously, because this is a double walled hat. It's supposed to be nice and warm for the winter, and I'm just stretching it out. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Now, find your ends from the two ends that came together. And what you're gonna do is you're going to close your tube. Simply, you just pull. And as you're pulling, you just wanna make sure that this is um, folding or rolling out the opposite way. So this just takes a little kind of um, maneuvering. And I feel like I have a knot going on here somewhere which is, here we go, okay. So pull it, so see it cinches down. Don't pull too hard, you don't wanna break your yarn, okay? And I'm just gonna cut this a little bit because it's a little too long. Um, and I like to finish the hole on this. So put my yarn through my needle. And what I mean is I just make sure that this is all everted, nice, nice. And then I just want to go back on it and close the hole. So I just do a little slip stitch here, make sure this is nice and closed. And then I'll just kind of go back so it doesn't come undone. It's not going to come undone, but it just makes me feel better to do this. And this will be on the inside. It's going to be covered up by the pom-pom, but I just like to do this. Okay, so that's closed. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the outer one. So again, you're gonna find your end where it ended here, and you're going to turn so it everts, and you're just gonna pull until it closes, and just turn it, make sure that all the ends are going around. Okay. All right, and then pull. So see, it closes up nice, nice, and then, so you close the other one on the inside so it's all done and you just bring them together like this. And then I just like to do a simple knot so they're held together. And again, don't pull too tight. You don't wanna break anything. Okay, now from here, we want to put on our pom-pom. So I'm going to root these in here. I think this is the hardest part of the whole project. <laughs> especially if you can't see what you're doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna look at my hat. So here you can see the brim, the way I made it, um, and this can be reversible. 
So, you know, if you want to have the gray sticking out, you can have the gray. If you want this side, I like this side. I like the color contrast here. So, let's see. I think, I think I'm liking, I think I'm liking, that's too bright. So, I think I'm going to go with this one. All right, so my pom-poms that I get from Amazon have the little elastic. And I'll have this linked for you guys down below because I get questions all the time. Where do you get your pom-poms? So I just loop it through. Now, some people like to put a button on the inside. Um, I don't feel like you have to put a button, but you can if you want to. Now, you just want to make sure you catch both layers. And I'm going to pull my pom-pom here so it goes on the top. And then you want to come back through the top of your hat here and then again you want to catch the elastic part of your pom-pom and basically you're just cinching this down to the top of your hat so see that's going on really nicely and then um, come back through catch that again and you want to do a few throws and just make sure that this is really nice um, down. So I'm going to turn this inside out so you guys can see the inside. I'm just going to secure this and make sure that this is nice and tight. There we go. A couple of throws. Make sure this is knotted nice, nice. Now, this um, I don't recommend just cutting this, especially if you're selling these. So the button is a nice touch. Um, but what I do is I take my thread and I just kind of I'm sorry, the yarn, and I just kind of weave it in between the hat. So let me pull this. So it disappears inside the hat. See that? And then I can cut it, and now, oh, this got caught. And then it's it's hidden. So here's your hat. Oh, look how cute he came out. I like that. Here we go. So this was my... So depending on how you want to make your brim, I like to have color contrasting. So I did 70 of the light gray and 70 of the dark gray. So I get this kind of contrast here. I really, really like that. So if you wanted this just to be a solid color, you would do 50 rows of whatever color you wanted. And then you would do the um, rest of your color there. So that's how you make a hat literally within under a half an hour. Um, yeah, and this will fit an adult size person. So, happy knitting. <laughs>